guys. Morning. Hi, Morning, Kristen. Hi, Pam, we can see you today. I know, now that somebody told me about the little video thing at the bottom, I'm, I'm more organized. I'm not awake, <laughs> but I am more organized. <laughs> so, how's it going, everybody? Good. Good. Um, okay, so I do have to tell you, I got a text last night with a completed project and it's <gasps> on its way back to me to go out to the finisher already. Don't tell us oh. you. I'm close. <laughs> I don't want to know. Right. Total overachiever, right? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> wow, it looks great, Lorraine. <laughs> so, um, but no hurry, no hurry. I think we have some people who haven't even put a needle to the canvas. So there's more than one of you, more than one, multiple. So I did not say that to make anybody feel badly. I just wanted to say there is no timetable. As I said, we're not getting it back for this Christmas. So you have probably until, oh, mid-August next year to get this baby back for next Christmas. So no hurry. So um let's talk about um any problems questions concerns from last week what um or even the week before what are what are we um anything that you struggled with anything that you need help going over tell me about it uh Kristen I, yes I can't I, as I said last night I can't get the fern okay so it, it, I'm, I'm looking at my canvas and I, I think I'm doing it right, but it goes into the second color. Okay. The first so, column of the second color. All right. So I'm going to so, put my canvas up. Tell me if you can see this. So the way the fern stitch goes, I wonder if, you know what I'm going to do? Anybody else struggling with the fern stitch at all? Which which one are you talking about? The fern right? stitch is um, tree, tree number four. Oh, okay. Okay, Thank you. so if you go into, so we talked, this is the one where I could probably confuse the heck out of you guys because the numbers <laughs> are all, all messed up. They're all upside down. So if you go into, um, so let's go into the upside down four. Say you go into pick pick any of the um, pick any of the colors. Say the the light green one that's right in the center of the um, the yeah, step. That's where I started. Okay, yeah. if you go into hole number upside down four. Okay. Okay. And then you do a diagonal from left to right. You're going right. to cross over two crosses. Right. Okay. So you're going to go from four to three. Okay. That's okay. Right. And then you left to right. You move left to right. And then you go down to hole number one. You should still be in the same light green color. Right. So you so, go. And I'm sharing. I don't know why I'm not getting this. Can you I'm show me your sharing the hole, Sharing this, the, the, the place where it's going. I don't know. When you go into hole number one, are you still in the same light green color? Uh, well, I am now, let's see, let me, I'm just kind of playing with it right now. But is but hole number one, do they start at the bottom and go up or at the top and go down? Start at the bottom. Okay. So if you start right at the bottom, right above the, the tree, <clears throat> like right above the tree bark. If you start at the- weird. Why do they do it upside down? Well, I did it upside down because the yeah. fern stitch usually goes the other way. I know that's what. So you're going left to right. So left from four to three. Four to three, got that, and then from one to two. Correct. Right. It should not share the. It should not go into a different color. Okay. Is okay. yours? No. If you do one stitch, it's fine. But if you do a second row. To cover the green, it's 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 not okay. Hold on, hold on. Um, okay. I am actually looking at Kathy's, and hers looks like it might be painted a little bit different. <laughs> one, two, okay. One, two, one, two. So you need one, two, 
three, four. You need four yeah. and then one, two, three. Okay, so the green is a little short on yours. Okay. It's only, there's only three columns. Okay, so yours was painted different than mine. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. Yeah, they all have three. No, no, no. This is correct. No, no, no. This is correct. Right. One, two. No, it's correct. They're all three. Correct. Okay. No. Yeah. One, two. Three one, holes, two. right? Is that what you're All counting? you need are three holes. That's okay. correct. No, they're all correct. I'm sorry. No, I don't know. My last two. My last two on the left are not three holes. Or is it three right. holes? I've got three one with four. canvas threads. It's three canvas threads. Okay. So it's three canvas threads and they are all, they're going to share the only one they're 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 going to share the two canvas threads one on each side of with a, another color. Okay? Oh. Right. Oh, okay. So they are going to share that hole okay. on the left and the right with the other color. Oh, okay. That works. All right, got so it. That hole on the left and the right is going to share the color with the one on either side. Right. So it is okay. going to they that's what's going to fill that hole. Okay. So those All two right. colors are going to go in uh, um, thank you Kathy. So they are painted the same. I'm sorry. I miscount. So if I'm going to hold mine up here, um you can see, can you guys see mine? Probably not so too it, well. Yeah, it all covers basically. It all covers and yeah. the, the they're going to be going one color is going to be going, one green is going to be going one way and one green is going to be going, be going the other, way. other okay. way. So when you were exactly. saying um, they, the, the, the greens, um, last night when we were texting back and forth, when you were saying the greens uh, without going into the other greens, I thought you meant it was covering another green canvas thread. Oh, oh, just yeah. sharing, they share, are sharing share, Okay, this is a share. Okay. It is a share. With the other color, I got yes. it. Yes. Does that make sense? It makes sense now. <laughs> okay. I am sorry Justin, if I did not. And that's okay. I'm I apologize for these numbers being upside down. But the, as I said, that the the fern stitch usually does go the other way, um, but I wanted them to go down to look more like branches on a Christmas tree. Could you flip sense. it over and just stitch it upside down? So you that sure you're could. doing the fern the way you mm -hmm. normally would do it. You absolutely could. I just. Um, as I said, the reason I chose it to go yep. that way is because the, you know, the Christmas tree branches usually come down, but you, right. uh, you absolutely can do it however you wish. And I'm going to turn the whole canvas over that way. You're oh, just I, stitching it like sure. if, it's e yeah. if it's easier visually to turn the canvas upside down to do it that way. Absolutely. If, okay. if it's easier visually to do it so you can, so you can read the numbers properly, whatever's easiest yeah it is for you um great so yes and it, thank you it, you are more than welcome um and seriously reach out by text and send me pictures of your canvases um uh and we can always facetime or whatever if you guys get stuck on on that um as we as we move along as well um can I ask a question on number three the tree number three sure yes um the the stars yes um the lighter one is the entice correct so that's the french knot one the lighter one the sparkly one you mean the the only one i can see in my tree yeah <laughs> is this is the cross stitch oh, so the entice is that entice that's entice and that's a cross stitch okay and then the one we can't see the one well, that's very hard to see is, is the pepper pot is the pepper pot. And that is the French knot. Okay. <laughs> do we do those before we do the background? I suggest um, doing the French knots first. Okay. Yeah. And the reason I suggest that is because if you <clears throat> do the background first, it's going to make it even harder yeah. to see. That's so I, I did the French knots first. And then I did the um, cross stitch 
with the entice. And then I just filled in with the background. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Um, and <clears throat> then um, I um, also told you guys uh, about the YouTube um, page about the French knots. Um, but I can email that to you guys on um, a separate email if you guys want about the cross um, about the French knots, if that would be easier if somebody's not. That'd be great. Okay. I, I had a little difficult time finding it. I found finding it. Other and other what ones. I'll do is I will email um, a mass email with the link to the French knot recording. Um, and it's Andrea. You'll see Andrea's hands. You'll see her. Um, doing um, several French knots. And as I said, if you are not comfortable doing the French knots, you can do a simple cross stitch. Um, I would love for you to try doing the French knots if you've never done them before. I think it just gives a little bit, they sit up higher than the cross they, stitch. Yeah, it just gives do. a little bit different visual. Um, but if you hate them, if you hate <laughs> doing them, <laughs> I completely understand. Um, but that was the that was the progression that I did. I did the the knots, <clears throat> then the entice, and then the background. It will make it easier to see because those French knot stars are are pretty hard to see. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. What other questions do we have? Any, any, any? Just that the entice thread really ravels up, but I guess it does. My suggestion is, um, you mean. It unravels. It unravels. Yeah. yeah. Well, keep the keep the um, the length fairly short. Okay. Um, so that it doesn't unravel. Yes, Kathy. I have a trick that I learned at the ANG seminar. Oh, Kathy. Okay. So that works really well. Which is if you buy yourself a small glue stick. Kathy, the you, glue stick. come on camera. Come on ca camera, oh, Kathy. Know, I, just, I didn't bring it with me. I meant to. Oh, she didn't bring it. Um, but if you just put a little bit on your thumb and your forefinger and at the very bottom of the entice. The part that you've cut that's come through that the cut, needle. Either both. I do it at both ends. I just rub my hand, my two fingers on that bottom piece. I pull the entice through for, for a, you know, a half an inch, okay. an inch of the entice. And it, I thought about that, but I was afraid to do it. <laughs> so so I, just a little bit on the bottom and then a, a, at the top, the, the part that's come through the eye, just a little bit of, so you rub your fingers on the glue stick yep. and then rub it and on the thread. On, I just pull the entice kind of the last half inch of it and just pull the entice through my fingers. Okay. And it keeps it together. Oh, brilliant. Because you brilliant. both those pieces <laughs> You know, one becomes your kind of knot at the end, so you never see that. And then the other piece, you cut. Brilliant. How and about that, guys? Super well. Good. And that was one of the instructors at the seminar. There's Kathy Dulesky, star student of the day, just back <laughs> from the <laughs> seminar. How about that? Okay. Um, I'm going to have to try that. I didn't. It works awesome. I bet. That's yeah. fabulous. Um, because it's a great thread, um, yeah. but it, yes, I agree. It can be a little bit of a bear. Uh, um, okay. And um, how about Santa? Good. Who started Santa yet? I start. I did. Yay. Okay. So uh, where are you with him? I just as we were chatting, I just finished the turkey work on his. Um, oh, excellent. Hat. Okay, so. so that's perfect. Can you guys see the turkey work? Um, okay, so this is perfect because this shows, uh, uh, excellent, That could. that's perfect. So can you guys see the loop? Can you keep it up there, Lorraine? Yeah. So if, if, she, if she will speak, then gal, gallery will pick her up. Okay, oh, okay. She will pick her up, yeah. Okay, okay. so. Here is my Santa with his uncut turkey work on his hat. So what uh, the reason um, I am going, the, the, what I'm so happy about is that that's where I'm gonna have you speak here in a, a minute, Lorraine, because um, when, when you do your turkey work and you cut it, um, and I'm gonna hold mine up here in a minute, is 
don't cut it, don't trim it all the way. We'll do a final trimming when it comes back from the finisher, um, or they may do a final trim because um, you can get it um, nice and trimmed up when it comes back. Um, so it might look kind of messy right when you first cut it. Um, but the reason I'm so glad that Lorraine is where she is, is because um, that kind of shows what it looks like and how big your loops are once you do the stitch. And I'm, so I'm looking here, Santa, Santa, Santa. There's a picture of, and the other thing, I don't know, Lorraine, and um, you can tell me better, is if this is the stitch that you use for your turkey work. I know that there's a couple different methods for turkey work, the, the actual stitch itself. Um, and you use whatever method you like, or if, there, um, if there's another stitch um, that you've used, uh, another method that you've used, or that you have a book, that has an easier method or that you found one on Pinterest or um, Google or whatever. Um, so Lorraine, can you tell me, is this the method that you use or is do you use a different one? No, this is the method that I was first taught. It's the one that I always use. I know there's like a okay. through the loop yep. one, but this is the stitch that I use. Okay. And I, I am a little worried because it does not seem nearly as fluffy as yours right, right now. Like, okay. so, because yours looks really full and this looks a bit scraggly. Santa's, you know, a wee bit scraggly with his loops. Okay. Well, um, I don't think he will be, but okay. I'm also going to bring out my next tool. I think I brought my tool. I think another tool that you should have in your, you guys ever seen this? Yes. Best tool ever. What's it called? Bunka brush. A bunka brush. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when I finished cutting, I did my first cut on my um, hat and my the bottom of Santa's coat. You take this bunka brush and you just, and I was not gentle and I, ah. and I use this on lots of different threads like Persian, like I didn't obviously on his hat because his hat is Persian, but lots of different threads and um, I use it on fuzzy stuff um, and it takes like that because um, I've used fuzzy stuff also for Santa's beard and it kind of um, makes fuzzy stuff less um, polyester looking and more um, Santa's beard like, um, but it's a inexpensive tool that does wonders for threads um, and so once, once you make your first um, cut from those loops, so once you do this stitch, once you do this turkey work, you're gonna have long loops. Uh, Lorraine, do you mind holding your no. canvas back up? And, and just talk. Santa, so, yeah, and Santa. talk, so you're, you're- Okay, so you can see my Santa. Wait, is he, I can't, and I hold it yeah. up over there if I stand. Okay, there we go. There, now he's centered. Sorry for making you all seasick. <laughs> Keep talking. You can talk about your kids, your family. Just, <laughs> I just want people to, I just want people to see those loops. Keep talking about. Oh, okay. Well, weather. you can also go yeah. to view and just replace the pin and it'll stay on her. Oh, see, oh okay. Say that again. So. You can go to view oh. and go to gallery and in your upper right corner, there'll be pin or replace pin and you can do that and it will stay on her. Oh, so you guys are so much yeah, smarter. Good. Oh, wow. Me. So how do I, I can't, oh, there we go. So I can pin it on myself there. Okay. So now I can see what you all are seeing. Okay. So. So do you see those big loops? Yes. So, um, 
if I put them down. Those big that. loops, that's what it's going to look like when the, um, once the turkey work is done. And then um, what you do is you just basically take your scissors and kind of slice the top of the loops off, okay? Um, and not getting too close because we're just going to make a first pass at the, the top of those loops. Um, Lorraine, I am so grateful that you finished this just as we have right now. <laughs> so you're just, uh, once you finish the tops, uh, the loops, you're just going to slice the top of the loops off. Um, and then, um, if they're still too tall, take another snip with your scissors, make them a little bit shorter and then get your handy dandy bunker brush or, um, a toothbrush or, um, something like that and just rub the, um, put it back up, rub the, can you guys see me now or am I gone now? Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Um, rub Santa's hat and the bottom of his um, suit and it will get fuzzy. And as I said, um, we will make a final cut either when it gets back from the finisher or the finisher will do another we can tell the finisher to kind of clean it up when, when it goes. Okay. Now do you um, have scissors that you recommend Kristen to, to trim them with? Um, I just have a pair of scissors that I bought here at the store. I, um, I in, in full transparency, I'm being fully honest with you guys. This is the first time I've ever done Turkey work. Uh -huh. um, I was scared to do it. I was like, I waited to do the Turkey work last because I was, had not done it before. So you guys <laughs> got me out of my comfort zone for turkey work. So if, um, it's you know, pretty I, forgiving. It is forgiving. Cause it, I, you, it then, you don't, I mean, if you, if, as long as it's tight, tight down, it doesn't really matter because you don't it, see a pattern. Once it's there cut. is no pattern and, um, I, right. And I was, uh, um, I, I don't know if I did it right. It <laughs> I, gotta be honest. It looks I just, strange. I sat there and I followed this pattern <laughs> uh, as I sat with this pattern in my lap as I stitched. Honestly, that's what I did. So um, anyway, so that's turkey work. Uh, if you want, try it down here at the bottom of your canvas. Um, we don't have a ton of, you know, we don't have a ton of, space to work with. Um, and, uh, but, you know, try it. Um, yes. Um, but anyway, so that's the hardest part of Santa. And we just got, uh, Lorraine just helped us immensely to tackle that. Um, obviously the, uh, the suit is the tent stitch. Um, the the uh, the flare for the belt it can be a little challenging just because flare is um, can can fray um, like <laughs> pantyhose the nylon just if if it starts to fray just take snip off anything that that frays um, that was just a diagonal satin stitch that goes across um, the two uh, you know diagonally across two of the canvas intersections for the black part of his belt. I know some people said, well, how come you didn't use the um, patent leather for his belt? Has anybody tried to use patent uh, leather? The it is, it's tricky. It is tricky. Um, it's not patent on both sides. Right, it's exactly. Not. So you have to, so it, yeah. you really <laughs> have to use a laying tool. And um, I wanted to save it for his boots. So I, decided something shiny, um, flare worked well. And um, so I saved that for his boots. So um, speaking of the patent leather for his boots, I padded his boots. I'm gonna show you the back of my canvas. It is not pretty. You can see the <laughs> colors. <laughs> you can see the colors sticking out from where I padded it. I used, you can see one of the colors is blue. It was whatever was laying next to my chair. I just, <laughs> put some whatever color. Um, I made some horizontal and some vertical stitches 
um, underneath, um, but try and stay within a stitch. Um, don't go all the way to where you're going to stitch your patent leather. Stay in one stitch from that. Does that make sense? So don't share the hole that you're going to use for the patent leather. So make a horizontal stitch and a vertical stitch um, before you lay the patent leather. Does that make sense? Am I explaining myself? If I'm I not? use the uh, brown from the perfect uh, the tree barks. Perfect uh, tree trunks, right? Perfect. And whatever you have extra of, um, you, whatever you whatever you want to use. Um, obviously, the the gold around his belt with. Um, in one of those little bags, just a, a, a simple, that's Michelle, is that Michelle's phone ringing? I think she just <laughs> answered it, um, is just a simple tent stitch. Um, his face is a tent stitch, his cheeks, his nose, his lips. Let's talk about his eyes. So his eyes are in the black splendor, but I changed the direction to make them, um, um, depending on which eye it was, I kind of changed the direction so that they didn't look um, kind of funky. Um, you know, sometimes when you do a tent stitch, they can look like they're, uh, if they're yeah. going from left to right, they'll look okay. But if they're going right to left, they look like a, a zipper stitch. Does that make sense? So I angled them going from right to left on that one side of his eye. Does that make sense? Yep. I, I didn't do that. And I, I still think he looks fine. Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You certainly, uh, it makes no difference. Absolutely. Um, and as a matter of fact, then it probably makes your face stitch look a little bit cleaner because you're not, um, it does make the face thread, uh, it fits a little bit differently in that hole. Um, let's go to his hat. And if I'm going too fast and you guys have questions, just yell at me to slow down. Um, his hat, 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 hat. Okay, it's a crisscross Hungarian um, with um, the Persian, that red Persian. And I love Persian. I don't know if, if you guys haven't used it. It's a great, it's a great thread for clothing. Um, I really, I really like it. Um, so obviously there, there is some compensating because, um, you know, there's not a lot of uh, area here. Once again, I started in the middle. I started in the middle of his hat and I'm sorry, that picture in the stitch guide is, um, very blurry, so you, you don't see it very well. Um, but I started in the middle where I could set the pattern easily. Um, and the way I did it, and this is probably not the correct way, but I am a visual person and I mm -hmm. mess myself up <laughs> easily. I'm honest with you guys. The way I would do it is I would do um, three, four, five, six of the bigger stitches. And then I would have to go back in and I would fill in with some of the sparkly stitches because I would visually, I would need those stitches so that I wouldn't make a mistake. I do all the stitches and then add the um, sparkly when I'm done. Which is probably correct. It, it but I mean, it works, but. Um, whatever you need to do, yeah. I just, sometimes I, better, yeah. miss, sometimes I miscount if I do that. Oh, yeah. So I need to add that sparkly stitch so that I don't miscount. Yeah. I have so made I, mistakes. Yes. <laughs> um, so you can either do all of the Persian and then go back and add the sparkle. You can do, um, some of the Persian, add some sparkle and go back in. Uh, I also have heard some people do all of the full stitches that they can do and go back and add the compensating stitches after. Yes. yes. That's, people do that. That's, that's so if I mean. you can't do a full complete stitch, they don't do that stitch at all and they go back after. That is also an option. Um, 
I, while I am there, I do my compensating stitches because if I try and go back after, I completely lose track of what I was doing while I'm there. It, that's all also personal, personal preference. Um, if, if you have the two threads going at the same time, do you separate them in the back somehow? I separate them in the back. I usually put um, right here, I usually have two um, magnets going and I just pull them off to the side, like one here and one here. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and that is probably not the correct way to do it. The needlepoint police are probably going to come after me, but I just, it's just, I, I need to see it. I just, um, yeah. it's just easier for me. I, but anyway, um, once again, it's all, it is also very forgiving because there are some compensating stitches. Nobody's going to be able to see if you did a compensating stitch, um, incorrectly or, you know, but as long, if you start where you can get some, some nice full complete stitches in it, it will, it will help set the pattern. Yep. Um, okay. Let's talk about his beard and his mustache. So, um, French, more French knots. <laughs> You guys are going to love French knots before you are done this class. Um, so the way I did this was I kind of separated his mustache and his beard. And you can see that, can you see that? Well, you can definitely see it from the picture in the stitch mm -hmm. guide. Um, I did his mustache with kind of long stitches off to the side. And then from his um, from his lips down became his beard. If you would prefer to kind of make it one long, almost complete, just a few short long stitches and then make it more long stitches into his beard, that is absolutely fine as well. The way that the um, French knots on a, on a stock or on just long French knots work is you make a long pass. You bring your French knots all the way down front. You can see from the line from just below his lips all the way down to where the red is on his, you, um, um, oh. his Thank you, his coat. I was gonna say his uniform. It's not really his uniform, his <laughs> coat. And you do that whole line of French knots all the way down, all the way along the front uh, the red of his coat. And I know Lorraine would say, do this before you do the red, right, Lorraine? Well, no, I did not do that because I will share that this stitch is one of the stitches that I find the most difficult. So you saved the dip most difficult for last. Well, <laughs> save the best for last. <laughs> I, well, I wanted to reward my progress <laughs> and then tackle the beard. But I well done. I did long stitches and then just put knots on okay. top. So, yeah. Excellent. So, okay, so <laughs> that's what you can do. But the, so the um, I'm just going to go back and just say what. And you're really not running a whole. A lot along the red, but the way it works is you run your thread down and you do a whole row of French knots along the red of his coat. Okay. okay. Then you do a second pass from that line below his lips and you bring the, um, the thread down and you do another whole row of French knots just above that whole row of French knots that you just did. Okay, so now you have two rows of French knots just above his coat. Are you coming up the same, in the same hole? No, just at above it. No, 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 sorry, not at the bottom. This top, are you coming? I did. Using the same hole again and then just finishing the knot? I did. Okay. Um, but if you come in just below it or just next to it, yeah. 
um, but great question. Either the same hole or next to it, it will all fill in and you won't be able to tell. So um, I would just say if if it looks like it's not filling in, use use the, the hole next to it. Um, Do you wrap once or twice for your French knot? Um, I mixed it. I some some I the smaller ones at the bottom I wrapped once. That first pass, I, some of them I wrapped once and some of them I wrapped twice. Okay, so that second pass, your um, French knots are right up against, so you have two rows of French knots right up against that red coat. Then I came back and the third pass of French knots are all random in his beard, okay? So you make three passes of French knots in his beard. Now, so Lorraine was saying, because she doesn't like the uh, to do the actual French knots on a stock, what she did is she did long stitches and then she just put her French knots on top of it. A perfectly acceptable alternative to do, uh, to, to That's doing the way French I do it. Because yeah. my French knot always goes through to the back. Right. Okay. okay. And so maybe if I wrapped it more, I don't, I don't know. You can wrap it more or I think as I had talked about this on the tree number three, I always go over a um, canvas intersection right? because my French knots are probably not great. So I always go over a canvas intersection so that they don't fall through the canvas hole. Um, so vary the number of wraps that you're going over the, uh, going around the um, needle to kind of make, to give some um, interest to the French knots on Santa's beard. Um, you can see the ones on the, in the middle of his beard are a little bit bigger. Um, does, that, um, does that scare anybody? Is everybody excited to do this stitch? Is everybody like, woohoo? French knots. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a really good time with Santa. And as I said, it was my first time doing turkey work. I had tried it before on another Santa project I was doing and it kind of um, scared me a bit. So I ripped it out and picked a different stitch. So um, I actually was really excited to um, do this class because I really, really wanted to try it again. So um <laughs> How about questions so Chris, on Chris, yes when you talk about cutting the tops of the loops off you're not just snipping this the loop in half you're actually taking off like an arc of it well yeah you know, a little first, bit of a, the circle at first um do you mind holding your um lorraine do you mind holding your santa oh, again sure am i in screen yep, yep. Can you okay. guys see that what she's going to do, or the way I did it, is I kind of held the, um, like, I kind of held the loops up, and I literally just snipped the tops of the loops off. Okay. So then you have just, like, fringe up there. And then I went back, and I cut a little bit more off. Um, and as Lorraine says, at first, they, they look a little, um, you're like, well, this doesn't look great. Doesn't and look full and fluffy. It yeah. doesn't look full and fluffy. And then I cut a little bit more off. And then I got this little bunk of brush out. And then I went to work. And I, I really think this helps a lot. Um, so that's all that's all I did. Um, and I think it will, I think it'll be fabulous. Um, so how about questions about Santa? Any any questions or concerns or anything? Look, um... oh, come I have on. a I have a quick oh. one. Yes, go no, go um, ahead. I'm actually getting furniture delivered. At the oh, moment. okay, yeah. <laughs> um, his belt itself, I don't yep. have like a color, or a stitch that we're supposed to use for what? The belt. The black for the black. Yes. The flare. Did I not write that in there? The belt it buckle. not be diagrammed. I, I have the buckle. I just don't know the color of the belt itself. It's on the prior page. 
Hmm. It's on the prior page. Let me see. Did I write? Oh, okay. That? Yeah. A belt. Flare 501. It's oh, okay. I'm right. so sorry. That's all right. Okay. Horizontal slant. I, I chose right. flare to make Pictures it a shiny on belt. Different boots. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Oh, you know, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, it's funny because the word Santa is underneath the green tree. So it looks <laughs> like that. I do know what Santa looks like. Um, okay. So the pom pom yes. was not obviously not on the original canvas, but I kind of felt like he should have one. I searched on Etsy. I went to Hobby Lobby trying to find a pom pom. I will tell you that someone did find one. Um, and I think she glued it on. I was not comfortable having a glued on pom pom because I think it will the glue will deteriorate. So I'm gonna, still gonna keep my eyes out. Um, I do think it needs to be tied in. So what I did was I went on YouTube and I, um, did I put the video on there? No, let me see if I can find the video and I'll also email it to you guys. The video that I use, it's a very simple how to make a pom-pom. Um, basically, I, it was either around a fork or around my fingers. I just took some of my essentials and some of my Persian and you literally wrap it around. I think it was a fork, but I think you could do it around your fingers and you just wrap it around your fingers 20 times and tie it off real tight and then cut, <laughs> cut tie it, tie it, tie it kind of. And then you, I took my bunker brush again and then I, I left like a long tie and I just pulled it through the back. Um, so let me see if I can find that YouTube video and I will send it along with the um, video for the French knots today. You don't have to add it. I just kind of, um, I don't know. I kind of felt like he needed a pom-pom on his hat. If you don't want red and white, you could do just red. If you wanted just white, you could do just white or nothing at all, whatever you whatever you wanted. Um, the only other thing I did want to talk about was I started the um, finishing stitch. Um, I just had some of the extra green. I think it was from this tree right here. It's just that slanted over two. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So you don't have to go every, it's not a tent stitch over every single one or in two rows, make it easier on yourself. Just go over two and it goes pretty fast. Um, and do you guys have two more minutes? Sure. I wanted to go grab the, the fabric. I'll be right back. <laughs> Now I'm in Pennsylvania. Where are you ladies? Are you all local to the store? Or are you? I'm in I'm South Carolina. Virginia. Oh, okay. So I'm in New far... Jersey. Oh, okay. I'm Ohio. Oh, okay, great. I actually live most of the year abroad. So oh. that's why Michelle was saying about sending me stuff. Okay, so the fabric that um, I really, really, really loved <laughs> for this canvas is this. Yeah. Mm, nice. So the way it was, was this. Mm. Right. It was super cute. So we had this, this is red Christmas plaid, but we also obviously have, you know, traditional green velvet. For those of you guys that don't know, I also send out all the finishing for Needlepoint Junction. So um, when you guys finish, you'll be sending it to me to send out because, um, you know, finishing was included, but there's beautiful green silks we could use red velvet there's so many um there's so many beautiful fabrics that we can use um but that red christmas plaid with this canvas was beautiful so there is no hurry to finish this um don't be in a rush <laughs> um 
I am going to be gone starting um, next Monday for probably two weeks. If you need anything, reach out to Michelle or you can send me a text. I'll still be available by text. Um, but if you need anything thread or anything, reach out to Michelle. Um, but if you guys want me to set up a follow-up Zoom or class just as a you know, last minute or, you know, last questions. Um, we can do that. Thoughts on that. Kristen, are you around the rest of today at the store? I am. Okay. Um, I might stop by later because okay. I'm having an issue. I'm still working on the background, but I'm having okay. an issue with the compensation around okay. the yeah, come it, on in. And I'm here. Sloppy, so I'll probably come down later. Come on in. And I'm here all week. And I'm um, around all weekend. So, um, you know, uh, and as I said, no hurry. And we can, so let me know. Uh, you can all send me an email or text on whether or not you want to do a follow up, just one follow up Zoom meeting um, with questions, or you guys can reach out to me individually. But I do appreciate everybody. Kristen, I yes. think it would be fun to meet up in about a month just to okay. see how we're doing. Okay, then let's do that. Know. What no I'll do feels like that. I, you know, well, you know what? Maybe what I'll do is I will schedule it, and then um, whoever wants to jump on can jump on. And then if you don't want to jump on, then you don't need to. Um, and that'll, you know, maybe we'll do that regardless. That would be fun. Okay. Okay. So I'll send an email out today with the video for the French knots and the video for <coughs> the, um, how to do the pom-pom. Does that sound good? Yep. Yes, please. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm at work. Um, it, the, you probably won't get the email until later this evening. Um, but I will send it. Thank you. All right. Thanks great. everybody Thank for you. joining me. Thank you. Good luck, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Right. It's, been a, it's been a really fun project. So thank Thanks you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye. 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 Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.